Okay, I'm going to get right to the point. Some people do not like to watch a long-winded video, so I'm going to break it down for you real quick. Really good sheath, 10 inches, 5 inches, very heavy, arrive sharp, worth every penny, buy it. Hey there, everybody. This just arrived today. Let's get it open, see what's in there. There it is. Out of the box. OKC 1889, Ontario Knights Company. This is the Spec Plus SP10 Raider Bowie knife with a nylon sheath. It's made in the USA. All right. Here's the nylon sheath right on top. It's molly compatible. It's got the uh, rivets down here, or the eyelets I mean, for a leg tie. Yeah, it's a good looking sheath. Considering it's nylon, and nylon's definitely not my favorite. It's got the swivel strap here, so if you're right or left hand, which is very good. It's got an adjustable top retention strap, which is quite nice. A decent sized belt loop, not gigantic, which is good. I don't like those, some of those sheaths that have just a ridiculously huge belt loop on them. This does have a very thick piece of plastic in there as a liner. It's like they made it extra thick on the side that faces your body, which is pretty nice. Looks like it's stitched really well. Everything looks really good on it. So yeah, I mean, as far as nylon sheaths go, that seems better than most. Okay, what's this, a shoestring. And it looks like it really is a shoestring. Little tiny short one. I guess that's for a lanyard. I can't imagine what else you'd use it for, but they throw that in there. And here's the knife. I guess you're like a limited warranty card from Ontario. That's good to have. Set some of this stuff aside. Okay, there's the knife. It's got a paper protector on it. It's got, I noticed instantly, as soon as I touch it, it's a very rubbery grip. It's a super hard rubber, kind of like automobile tire rubber, but there is a grip to it, a grippiness, so that's really good. It's got a brass eyelet there. I think that might help hold the tang in, but it's for a lanyard hole. I mean, it is a lanyard hole. It's for a lanyard so that you can wrap it around your wrist if need be. That's what I'm trying to so 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 say. But there it is. It's kind of flat on top. Kind of oval around the si sides and bottom there. Little belly in it, just a little bit. It's kind of got like a bird's head pommel on it so your hand don't slide too far back. And then I see it has a big, heavy duty, maybe not quite a quarter inch, but it's pretty thick hand guard there. But then you also have the little rubber guard there. Like that's pretty cool. You don't see that often. Well, let's do this. Here it goes. All right, there it is. Okay, just let me take it in for a second. It says, SP10 Raider Buoy. And the other side says Ontario Knife USA. I see some white gunk right here, but doesn't look to be polymer glue. I think it's just some light scuffing. So yeah, it looks like it's fitted in there very well. This is a stick tang or close to full tang knife. I see some of that black 
coating looks a little chipped on the edges. Like the edge looks fine. It's just the uh, that Teflon type coating is a little wonky there. You get a tiny little choil there. It's got a nice big like Ricasso there to choke up on it. All right, it's got a nice big Ricasso there. You can choke up on it. Gives you just enough space if your hands aren't too large. You can go clear up past this guard and choke way up on it like up here to do some fine carving, maybe some skinning. But yeah, the blade edge actually looks pretty good. So far, it's just the, the paint is a little wonky. Like maybe when they sharpened it, it chewed up that paint edge a little bit. Man, that is a thick knife. That's a big, thick quarter inch blade stock. You can feel the weight too. The tip is not ground 100% perfect. It's just not showing up. It's just slightly, it's just the grind on the tip. That can be fixed real quickly. This is a Bowie style knife. <clears throat> it's got the uh, clip point, huge clip point blade with that false edge on it. You can see that's not sharpened, it's just a swedge. And uh, it's got the saber grind with the little secondary bevel down here. And what I notice is, is it, it feels good in my hand. Really good. Little bit blade heavy, which is exactly what you want for a big chopper. And uh, I like that this like little piece of rubber here keeps your finger away from that cold, sharp metal guard. That's cool. Really grippy. I got a little extra space, a little more than I need, so it's got a big handle on it. So that's really good. I love how thick it is. That's actually why I ordered this, because it's got two things about it that I really, really appreciate in a big chopping knife. It's a quarter inch thick, and it's 1095 steel, and I do like 1095. I've never had, some people cry a river and say it breaks on them and everything else, and I'm sure it did, but I have seemed to have no issues with it. It always performs great for me. Holds an edge very long, doesn't usually chip on me. It's just, it's one of my more preferred steels in a big bushcraft knife. But yeah, definitely feels good in the hand. And you can just see how thick this steel is. And even though it does thin out at the top here because of the swedge, that line, if I could get it to focus, goes the whole way up here, which is normal. But I'm just saying because of that thickness, it just feels thick, like really thick, right up to the tip there. So I'm assuming this thing should really perform well for chopping and big tasks. And because it is an Ontario knife, and it's not a super high-end knife. I plan on using it and using it hard. So, I mean, yeah, I'm liking what I see so far. All right. It has about a nine inch cutting edge on it. It carries all the way over to just a hair past 15. And that makes the actual part where you grip here about just about five and a quarter so that's pretty nice pretty decent grip and at its widest you're looking at two and an eighth let me see if this is really a quarter inch Yeah, I mean, it's a quarter, so yeah. Very thick stock of steel there. Nice and beefy. So 
that's a big old blade. What's weird about this knife is uh, I have other Bowie knives that are just way bigger than this. Like this is not the biggest Bowie knife by a long shot. But yet when you pick it up, because the handle is so stout and the weight is there, it feels like it's a much bigger Bowie knife than what it is. And uh, yeah. I really like it so far. <laughs> I guess uh, you can tell. Let's see what it looks like in the sheath. Okay, there it is in the sheath. And it's in there. It's pretty quiet. The only noise was just my hand rubbing against the sheath there. It says 1889 on the buckles. Yeah, that retention strap is very snug. Both of them are, so might be a, this one buckled easy enough. This one was a little bit hard to buckle. I don't know how easy it would be to do it with one hand, but I think it'll loosen up a little with time. But like if it was on your side and you were just reaching down, it might be a little tougher, but yeah, I just did it. It's got the little extra material there so you can pop it that much easier when you need to get the knife. But still, that's very snug, so it still ain't going nowhere because you got this strap. And now, it's still in there. Like, I don't know if you really could shake it out. Oh yeah, I guess you can. Cause it was, it was kind of a snug fit when I put it in there. But then if you're left hand, you just swing that over, put the blade in the other way, and you're good to go. You know, let me check something real quick. Yeah, this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put it in like a right hander but I'm going to have the retention strap on the spine side of the blade. And I'm always complaining about sheath makers who put it on the, put it over on the uh, blade side and then it gets cut when you draw the knife or at least it runs the risk of getting cut because this one swivels and there's, there's plenty enough guard there to catch. Yeah. Like that ain't going nowhere. Plus you got the top retention. So that's, that's great. That's how I'm going to leave it. So now when I draw it out, or shake it out for video purposes, there's no risk of me cutting that. This, there's, I just have to be careful. That just is what that is up there, but much better, much, much better. Really nice sheath. It even feels nice, very firm because of the liner in it. So it's not all over the top and pockets everywhere and just a bunch of craziness you know it's like it's just right that's how i would say it in my opinion it's just right for a nylon sheath uh i guess i'll throw this on really quick just for the heck of it i mean there it is with the string tied on it's not long enough to wrap it over your hand the proper way like where you take the blade away from you and kind of fold it over my hands are just too big and there's not enough string. But just the old cheapo way where you just stick your wrist through like that, which ain't going to do much. You might be able to, like, find a way, you know. But I'll just put my own lanyard on it that's the right length. I like to use shock cord or paracord for that anyhow. But uh, let's do a paper cutting test. Okay, got a sheet of printer paper here. And this is the knife right out of the package. Haven't done anything to it. Let's see how sharp it arrived. Not too bad. Considering that uh, Teflon type uh, rust proof paint is on the edge and it's a little chipped, I thought maybe it wouldn't. I thought it might catch the paper, you know, but it's really not. I mean, for a big knife from Ontario, because they kind of have a reputation for not sharpening a lot of their blades too well, this one seems really good. Now, that's not the sharpest cut I've ever seen, but it's, it's good, especially for a big chopper. Yep. Could do a lot worse than that. 
Oh, isn't that something that's beautiful? <laughs> I just got my uh, olive green Glock Perfection ripstop nylon hat today. And, uh, well, it wasn't just today, but I'm going to review it today, is what I'm trying to say. It says Perfection since 1986. Yeah, this is a decent quality hat, too. I've already tried it on, and it fits good. It looks good. It's got the uh, Velcro, but they actually made this hat, like, extra big. So, you don't, if you have a big head like I do, you don't have to wear it way over at the very edge. You actually can wear it like that. And my head's just about 2X, so, and look how much strap I have left there. So very, very good. I like that a lot. Has nothing to do with the knife, but I figured what the hey, I'd throw it in there. Check that out. Now that's a nice set. Cannot complain about that. Well, there you have it. I don't have a whole lot more to say about it. It arrived as sharp as it needs to be. Comes with a really decent nylon sheath. It's got the weight without having to be ridiculously too big. It's got a very grippy handle. I really like that uh, hand guard there. This thing is definitely designed as a tactical type blade. Now all I need is a camera that stays in focus and life, life would be better. <laughs> but yeah, that, it really impressed me. This thing has been around for a long time. It's not like this is some new blade, you know? Most people watching might even have it already. And <clears throat> I've got some Condor blades like the Dundee and things like that, and they're nice. But they weren't so nice that I wanted to run out and get another knife that resembled it, you know? So I get, I think that was part of the reason I've held off on getting it for a long, long time. Cause I just thought, like, I don't know, I just felt like I could do without it, you know? And then it just always pops up on reviews and stuff and I watch them and more often than not, people have very good to say about it. And they're even uh, saying theirs arrived sharp. So I was like, you know what? It's 60 bucks. It's ac actually at the high end right now. It usually goes for about 40 to 60. Of course, I waited until it was 60. Like a. I'll just leave that to your imagination. But I ended up buying it. And I'm really liking it from what I'm seeing so far. It it feels like I got my money's worth, that's for sure. Just from an unboxing perspective and from what I've seen from other people's reviews, it feels like the spine is 90 degrees, even though it has that coating on it. And so does this like Ricasa a little bit here. So I think you could strike a ferro rod on the spine or down there. Now, I could be wrong about that, but it, it feels like it's gripping my my finger just enough. But it wouldn't hurt to take a file to it and get some of that coating off, like in the area where you planned on striking it. But uh, I'm trying to think if I said everything I can think of about it. I gave you the measurements. This is still made in 1095 high carbon steel, which I really like. It's one of my favorite steels for big knives. And it's got the nine inch cutting edge. If you count clear up to the hand guard there, it's like 10 inches with like a five and a quarter inch handle. So yeah, you could do a lot worse than this knife. And it, it's really raining out today and blasting wind. So I don't know if I'll make it out today to get to test it, but that's definitely, I'm looking forward to taking it out. That's for sure. 
But I hope you enjoyed this video, and that's all I have for this video. This is Joe Doomsday signing out. Hey, did you know?